Hello and welcome to episode two of Inside Storm. It's proudly presented by Red Z. Red Z is the Australian lender that specialises in providing loans for the self-employed. I'm Sam Hargraves, your host, and I'm joined by a former Melbourne Storm player who now heads up the Old Boys Brigade and he is currently the player wellbeing coordinator. Peter Robinson played 75 games for the Storm between 2000 and 2005. G'day, Robbo. Great to have you on board. Sam, I heard Dallas Johnson was here last week, so I hope I uphold to his standards. He's a terrific man, Dal. He absolutely is. Righto, let's get into it. Round three, uh, our Red Z report. Uh, it was another tough game away. Uh, one and three now on the season, but it was the grand final rematch we'd all been hanging out for against the Penrith Panthers, and it went down to the wire. It was an absolute thriller. It just unfortunately didn't go our way. And that wasn't through lack of effort. You know, we're right in it until the last moment, and that's what you want to see from a Melbourne Storm team, no matter where they are on, are on, the, on, the, on the football park and the game. But... You know, to play um, you know, third, uh, third, third uh, Thursday night game and, and just to go down, to the, it's a probably early in the year to have a, a grand final replay, but that would have been really handy to get that win uh, from the Panthers, who, who are up until this stage, though, no, no one had scored a try on them until we did. So they've been playing some really good football. 12-10 loss in the end, but it was a fantastic game by Brandon Smith who uh, filling in for uh, Harry Grant at the moment and just what a, what a joy to have an international hooker in that position. He was doing it in all facets of the game. If he wasn't scoring tries, he was laying tackles, four tackle breaks as well and zero errors. He was uh, really influential in every part of the game. And the lead up to his try as well, that was really, you know, that happened on the back of Tommy Eisen who's been able to get that one-on-one strip and and, and Penrith would have prepared for all this f the whole week leading in how, how dangerous Brandon Smith is close to the line. Again, when you get close to the line, your strength sort of doubles. And he was able to get a one-on-one -on -one with the fullback. And you can see him slamming the ground with his hand because he would have known. And they would have prepared the Penrith Panthers of how dangerous and important he is to the Melbourne Storm close to that line. But you can see him how disappointed he was, but they still couldn't stop him. As I said, Robbo, he was good in both ends, at both ends of the ground. Uh, 34 tackles, but this was the pick of the bunch on Matty Eisenhuth. Yeah, and Matty Eisenhuth, as long as, as, long as, as well as the other teams in the NRL, are going to know how tough Brendan Smith is in defence as well. And, uh, and that's sometimes... What, and when you get to that stage, like Dallas last week, you sort of don't make as many tackles because not, not a lot of fellas, they start running, running away from you because they know how... Uh, ferocious, you're on it because they don't want to get hurt. Mm. And the only other way that could be better for us if we had, had a, you know, spilt the ball up and got the ball back. But that was a tremendous tackle, and that that sort of energy in the field that lifts that lifts your team. That lifts you, and that's real good leadership on the field. That certainly was. Look, it was an edge of your seat finish. It was uh, absolutely worth the price of admission. Uh, Josh Adokar scores in the left corner, 64th minute. It puts us in front. Panthers then take the lead back in the 74th minute uh, through Kurt Capewell, the origin rep, and we then take the ball down the other way for Justin Olin to be held up. It took four of them to do it, it must be said. Uh, Viliame kick out might have been the defensive play of his career. Uh, Spencer Lenny, in there, Matt Burton and Tyrone May. Uh, just talk us through uh, this last gasp effort that we thought that we'd snatched it here. Yeah, how exciting was it? And, you know, you people could say, you know, Justin should have passed it to Josh, but nine times out of... Well, more times than not, Justin Olin's getting that ball over the line. And, you know, that lead up to the... You know, just to get the uh, get the ball back to try and um, you know score a try right in, in that last 30 seconds of the game, you have to acknowledge the work Kicker done as well. He was taken out of play by by Tui, and he was lying down. He probably laid down for five seconds to try and illustrate, hey, if they score here, we need a penalty because they impeded me. But he got up, and you could see Justin. He's sort of on the other side. The body, it's hard for him to roll with the ball then down. But when Kicker gets that ball underneath his hand. And you could sort of see Josh when he came over. He's probably not as convinced. But he has to then make out uh, we got the try, which any footballer was would do. Um, but it was a tremendous effort by kick out. It was a finish worthy of a grand final rematch. It just wasn't the result that we wanted and didn't go our way in the end. Let's have a listen to what uh, Craig Bellamy, coach, had to say after the game. I feel like they'll come the old 80 minutes, to be quite honest. Um, I thought our, our guys, have, I thought, a lot like last week, that they were brave. And they just kept hanging in there, but we done some dumb might be the wrong word, but we done some silly things. There was a couple of just some little points in the game where we just didn't seem to have that effort area. You know, we we should have got the ball back. You know, before they scored that try, it was three minutes to go, and 
you know, we're waiting for each other to dive on the ball instead of getting on the ball, you know. So, like I say, but while I, I just thought we hung in really good, uh, we completed really poorly the second half, and for us staying in there, I thought it was a tremendous effort. But we just, we just need to... You know, I think last week we got across the try line three times and couldn't get it down. I think that happened twice again tonight. You know, we just got to nail those opportunities. You know, we had, I thought we had plenty of opportunities to score a couple more tries, but we just didn't, couldn't ice it. You know, I'm not quite sure why that is, but two weeks in a row it seems strange. But, um, but as I said, I, I, you know, like overall for, for most of it, our effort was tremendous, but uh, just lacking a little bit of polish, you know, finishing it off. So Storm 1-3 and three now, Coach Craig Bellamy there, but a big chance at redemption this week against a team that we've absolutely had the wood over for many years now. Uh, Broncos, big clash, uh, blockbuster game between two of the biggest clubs in the competition. Let's have a look at how the teams were announced last night for the Good Friday game between the Broncos. So Ryan Pappenhausen, the, the big in that it comes back and uh, couldn't have come in at a better time. We were missing four origin reps, as we mentioned before, uh, in that loss to Penrith. Uh, He's going to make a massive difference straight away to this side. He will, and he reminds me so much of Billy Slater. He's just so explosive for those first, you know, first ten to twenty metres, and that, that in any sense is is um, is a really bene is a, is a bonus for any footy team. But he's also his organisational skills. You know, when he's back at there, number one, he's letting the guys know where to be in the defensive line. But just because of his pace, he makes opportunities, you know, come off. And that's why he's going to be so valuable to come back. And, you know, Nico Hines came in last week. He done a tremendous job as well. Um, and, you know, Paps coming back is going to strengthen the team. The Broncos get a big boost, though. Their front row uh, has a much more ominous look about it uh, with Matt Lodge uh, coming in. And uh, they also bring back in uh, Payne Haas into that side. Yeah, some big bobbers coming back. But the, the game, the way the game's going now, it doesn't matter how big you are. If you can't carry your weight for a long period of time where you're going to be you're going to be doing a tough out there so and that's something I'm sure you know our smaller players are really mindful of Jerome Hughes is really good at identifying who's getting a little bit more tired um, I reckon the other player that we need to be mindful of is Jake Turpin yeah they're number nine they he, Jake had a couple of seasons down here with the Melbourne Storm with us in our system but he's extremely tough he is so tough in defense and he's got a good passing game and kicking game and he's also creative getting out of dummy half as well so he's a player that really a little bit like Cameron Smith, he gets their forwards on the advantage line. And so he's going to be a player we need to keep an eye on as well. Let's have a listen to the Fox, Josh Adokar, ahead of Friday night's clash. I've known Welsh for five years now and he's one of the toughest players I've ever played with. And um, you know, full credit to him, mate. He's, he's worked hard. He's earned himself an origin jersey. And um, I have no doubt that he's going to play Australia, Australia this year um, in the World Cup. He's just a quality player for our side. And, I'm so happy um, that he achieves the 100th game for the for NRL and, and the Melbourne Storm at the same time. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can get the win for Welsh. Uh, Josh Haddo Carr there, and uh, we're very excited for Christian Welsh as well. What a great servant he has been, uh, 100 games, and that is a, a milestone worth celebrating, Robbo. Uh, let's dive into the Red Z preview, and we'll analyse this Good Friday appeal match against the Brisbane Broncos. So we take a look at both teams uh, in the head-to-head -head stats. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a Broncos team that the Storm have had the wood on. 48 times they've played. The Storm have won 34 uh, of them. Uh, and at the venue, at Amy, 74%, uh, the winning ratio for the Storm. So the, the numbers really do uh, point to a, a Storm victory. But the Broncos come off their first win of the season, a big win at that uh, over the Doggies. Uh, and they'll be full of confidence under new coach Kevy Walters. Yeah, and Kevy also spent a bit of time at the Melbourne Storm under Craig Bellamy yes. as well. Um, stats after the ball's kicked off mean nothing. Um, and then you've just got to turn up the right attitude and, and, and make sure that you're prepared well enough you know, during that week leading into that game that you're going to do your best every time you, you take the ball or you, you, you make a tackle that you're going to do it um, with purpose and, and, and commitment. So what do you reckon the Storm are going to look to change, if anything, going into this game against the Broncos, Robbo? I don't, well, they don't need to change your effort. I think there was parts of last week's game that they... There was moments they could have, I suppose, been a bit more committed, you know, t particularly when Craig was saying that ball was kicked three minutes to go. Someone just needed to wear a bruise and jump on that ball. So, and the thing I love about our club, we, we're, really, um, we're really reflective. You know, we learn and grow from things that we need to, need to, to be mindful of the week going forward. Um, so it's certainly not the effort. It might be effort in spe specific areas, but it ain't the effort for the 80 minutes. We're a team that can, 
We back ourselves from anywhere. Um, and I think the, the inclusion of Ryan Pappenhausen, he's sort of, like Billy Slater, he changes little, little opportunities in the, he makes them come through. Mm. And, and he does that because of his pace and his speed. Um, so he's a big inclusion for us as well. He is, and we've got a couple of big milestones. We heard Josh Addo Carr congratulating Christian Welsh ahead of his 100th game. We should be congratulating the Fox as well because he too is playing his 100th game for the Melbourne Storm uh, on Friday night. And when we speak about Josh Addo Carr, you spoke of Ryan Pappenhausen and pace. Well, this man is pace personified. And uh, as we know, we've heard Gus Gould mention it on repeat, just how fast he is. And what he could win and that he's the fastest man on the planet. Uh, how good has he been, 100 games uh, for the club? Well, he's always had a connection to us. He played his debut for the West Tigers against the Melbourne Storm. And then he's obviously played and been with us for a long time. And he's had some, some uh, wonderful achievements while he's been down there. But with Josh, something always happens around him, whether it's in defence or whether it's got, he's got his ball on the end. Um, he's just exciting to be around. And he's a real good... He's a really, really grounded and strong in his culture outside of footy as well. And that's why the players love him and love getting around him. And, and I love whenever we score a try, he gets in and celebrates and, and, in, and enjoys the moment together. You need uh, heart and soul players at, at every club. Uh, Christian Welsh, definitely one of those. And you mentioned work on the field, off the field. We know the charity stuff that, that, that he gets around and gets involved in. And as a player, such a solid and consistent performer across the 100 games and, and rewarded in the... Uh, in the Origin jersey that he received last year, just reward for consistent effort and consistent performance over the years. Yeah, great guy, Welchie. You can't. Um, he's you know held in extremely high regard at the Melbourne Storm. But as you said, the charity work that he does, the off-field stuff, it really means a lot to him. Um, I think he's now on the board of the the Players Association as well, which is a great acknowledgement for him. Um, the, the one thing I will be critical of is his, is his slice in the, when he plays golf. Mm. Uh, he's yep. got me the last couple of times and he's probably... I've had to shout him lunch. It really hurts. It does. It so does. I'm hoping to get that back at some stage. But great guy, great player. He, and he can always get an offload. And that's the stuff you can't prepare for. That's the stuff that makes us... Like a Ryan Pappenhausen getting a, getting a, um, a pass back from Kristen Welch. That, that's the things that really makes us, uh, you know, extremely... Um, uh, powerful. Let's turn our attention back to the Broncos, the opponents for the weekend. A 24 to nil uh, victory over the Bulldogs in round three. Uh, they get their first win of the season, as we mentioned. New coach Kevy Walters, there's big changes in the off season. Uh, what did you see, and, and what should the Storm be looking out for uh, against the Broncos this week? Yeah, they've got a fairly young side, and they've got some outside backs that are really athletic and really fast as well. You know, Xavier Cates, we've seen there, he's. Um, He's only a young guy. He's played representative already. Um, Asako, he's got some really good you know, footwork. And um, so those... And the other guy for me is Jake Turpin. I think he's, he's really creative at hooker. And he spent a couple of years in our system. Uh, Kevy Walters spent a couple of years under Craig Bellamy, of course. But they're... Um, obviously, they're, they're going to be... They're obviously hurting from what happened last year. So they're going to be doing their best for their members and supporters like we are. For the game... For the game against the, the Broncos, uh, we have partnered with the Good Friday Appeal. Now, the new initiative is part of the Storm's push to create a permanent blockbuster fixture on Good Friday. Now, we've also set up a Melbourne Storm virtual tin to raise money for supporting and raising funds for the Royal Children's Hospital. Now, you can see that QR code on your screen right now. If you can, scan that. QR code and you are able to donate right now to a, a wonderful uh, organisation uh, and a wonderful cause, uh, the Good Friday Appeal uh, and our mates at Red Z, they will match it as well. Uh, on top of that, as we said, dollar for dollar Red Z are going to match that, all the money raised by the Melbourne Storm towards the Good Friday Appeal. It's a very big game coming up, Robbo, so your score prediction for the game, please. Yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll win by eight. But can I just say, Sam, particularly those things you touched on, Red Zed, you know, my wife, uh, our house burnt down seven weeks ago, and Red Zed being a major support of the, sponsor of the organisation, you know, they got in around us and really helped us out. Um, and the other one was um, you know, the Good Friday appeal. I've got three kids and, and our youngest is now seven, our daughter. She's had two open heart operations, which took place at the Children's Hospital. You don't really understand when you become really vulnerable in those positions, how important it is to have those um, people around you and those organisations around you. Uh, so I just want to acknowledge that, mate. Uh, it's beautifully said and it's a great indication of just how important these 
charities are and the first-hand experience that you bring to the table with it is just a, a great example to show people why we need to get around these organisations uh, and these companies. So thanks for sharing it, Robbo. We, we really do appreciate it. That is all for tonight's Inside Storm. It's proudly presented by Red Zed. Red Zed is the Australian lender that specialises in providing loans for the self-employed. A big thank you to Peter Robinson for joining me tonight. It was a pleasure having you, Robbo, and thank you to all the members and fans for tuning in. We will see you at the same time next Wednesday.